I'm Marek Szczerba, I'm from Institute of Geological Sciences, Polish Academy of Sciences, and I will tell you about methodology and applications of molecular modeling in natural sciences. Let's start from the definition. What's actually molecular modeling? These are theoretical methods, uh, computer, computational methods, uh, which are used in order to predict and describe molecules and molecular systems. And we have different uh, approaches uh, used to describe these molecules, molecular systems. We can divide them depending on the uh, length scale and on the time scale. We have the quantum mechanics, reactive molecular mechanics, non-reactive molecular mechanics, and mesoscale and continuum models. Uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, I will tell you about the methods that are marked in orange. I will start with quantum mechanics, then uh, we'll tell about non-reactive approach, and then uh, about this reactive molecular mechanics. And all this methodology will be supported with examples. Quantum mechanics. Applications of quantum mechanics lies rather between chemistry and physics and there are not so many applications in biology. The quantum mechanics approach describes molecules uh, as uh, electron clouds uh, and nucleus. When two uh, atoms come close to each other, there is a formation of uh, bondings which is described by the formation of particular electron clouds. We have two uh, large approaches in the quantum mechanics. One is this wave function approach, uh, the second one is the electron density approach. I will start with this wave function approach. This approach comes from the Schrodinger equation. Here is this uh, Schrodinger equation. We have the total energy operator and wave function on the left side and on the right side. On the right side we have also energy. There are many solutions of this Schrodinger equation. Uh, each one corresponds to particular wave function and to particular energy. Here is an example for harmonic oscillator. Uh, we have uh, particular energies and uh, particular wave functions. Another example uh, are atomic orbitals. We have these particular orbitals, each of them corresponds to particular uh, energy level. Uh, Modulus square of this wave function can be interpreted uh, as probability density of finding this particular particle, uh, particle at given space and at given time. And here are two examples. So we have uh, in blue wave function and in red uh, the probability density of finding this particle at uh, a given space and given time. And uh, if we consider uh, single atoms, we uh, have particular uh, atomic orbitals. Uh, for example, for uh, nitrogen uh, with uh, seven electrons, uh, these electrons occupy uh, particular orbitals with increasing uh, energy. So the for uh, lowest uh, energetic state of this nitrogen, we will have the following uh, distribution of electrons at atomic orbitals. Uh, if uh, two atoms come close to each other, we have the deformation of these atomic orbitals and then we have the uh, formation of molecular orbitals. On this example, for two hydrogens which form uh, H2 uh, molecule, on the left side we have uh, two 
uh, atomic orbitals and on the right side uh, bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. For the case of water, uh, even uh, for this small, very small molecule, uh, the shapes and uh, the shapes of molecular orbitals uh, looks quite complex. Uh, practical uh, calculations uh, using this quantum uh, mechanical approach is only possible uh, for very uh, simple uh, systems. The exact solutions uh, of the Schrodinger equation uh, can be obtained uh, only for uh, harmonic oscillator and also for very simple systems. In order to uh, perform practical uh, quantum mechanic calculations, uh, we need to assume certain approximations. The first one is uh, the one that uh, nuclei don't move. Uh, in this approximation, uh, we set certain structure uh, of uh, nucleus and for this certain distribution uh, we calculate uh, electron clouds. Then we can move these uh, positions of atom and then again uh, repeat uh, optimization uh, of these electron clouds. Uh, the second approximation is the separation uh, of electron motion and a little will be tell uh, at the next slide. And uh, we describe uh, electron motion in molecules by combining uh, atomic orbitals, this electron motion in atoms. If we do not consider electronic correlation, we describe the system uh, as a one electron can interact uh, with the average cloud uh, of uh, another electrons in a molecule. In practice, because of this electronic correlation, uh, which is uh, due to electron-electron repulsion, uh, the electronic density will be more diffuse, uh, which will lead to uh, longer bond lengths. Uh, also, another very important uh, aspect connected with this electronic correlation is interaction between atoms, between molecules. Uh, if we have uh, two atoms that, that come close to each other, we will have uh, electronic motion in one and another. Uh, in one we can uh, describe this motion as a fluctuating dipole. If this fluctuating dipole comes to uh, another atom or another molecule, we will have induced of uh, another uh, fluctuating dipole uh, in other atom or, or molecule. And this is called this van der Waals interactions. Uh, in practice, using this wave function approach, when we do not include this electronic correlation, uh, the complexity of calculation uh, increases like n to 4, where n is number of uh, orbitals. Uh, if we uh, include this electronic correlation, the complexity grows much faster. It's like n to 5 to n to 8. In the second uh, large um, methodology of, uh, of solution, uh, of uh, used in uh, quantum mechanics, uh, this electron density approach, we do not have a concept of wave function. Uh, instead, we have this uh, electronic density idea. And uh, in this approach, 
with electronic correlation, uh, the complexity of the calculations increases like n to 3. There are also non-linear uh, approaches in which the complexity of calculation increases linearly with the number of, uh, at uh, of uh, atomic orbitals. Uh, quantum mechanics applications. Uh, we can perform uh, geometry optimization of certain structures. For them, we can calculate the relative energies. Uh, also, studies of possible reaction mechanism are possible. Then we can calculate infrared, NMR, UV spectra, and calculate uh, quantum dynamics, perform quantum dynamics. Uh, in case of geometry optimization, we are looking for a uh, structure uh, which correspond to the lowest energy. And here we have example of uh, concept which is called potential energy surface, uh, which corresponds to uh, energy uh, depending on the different uh, variables in this um, for, for particular molecule and uh, with in geometry optimization we are looking for this uh, minimum uh, on this potential energy surface and here is an example show that describing this the surface and in practice we have uh, this example corresponding to this particular uh, molecule and different potential energy surface corresponding to different electronic structure. Uh, we performed calculations for Fennan train as an example of geometry optimization uh, and it's five isomers. We have a methyl group attached to different carbon on this Fennan train uh, rings and here we have uh, these six molecules. For each of them, we perform this geometry optimization, then calculate their relative thermodynamical stabilities. And we were also interested in possible reactions that turn one molecule into another. And here is an example. Uh, on the left side, we can see uh, one isomer. On the right side, uh, we can see another isomer, and we have this uh, energy of the transition state. Based on that, it was possible to develop this graph and based on that, predict and explain uh, suspected reaction that occur uh, in uh, natural rocks. Uh, another example of application of uh, quantum mechanics in natural science uh, is studies of sorption, in this example, uh, argon atom on the surface of uh, clay minerals. Uh, another example, uh, we were interested in explaining sorption of this particular uh, molecule uh, on the surface of clay minerals. We know that the different uh, ions that are on the surface uh, of these minerals and uh, we assume that this uh, organic molecule will attach to these ions. Based on that, we uh, perform calculations of infrared spectra and compare these results uh, with actual uh, results from experiments. Another example uh, is uh, application of this methodology to predict uh, thermodynamic stability of different uh, crystal structures of particular minerals. In more biological approaches, we can uh, use quantum approach to describe certain uh, active center of, uh, for example, this metal of proteins and use uh, another uh, less time demanding approach to describe other parts uh, of these proteins. 
We can also perform uh, quantum dynamics, which is a study of uh, evolution of a system in time. And here we have some example. Non-reactive molecular mechanics. This approach uses classical mechanics to model uh, molecular system systems and uh, applications of this approach lies uh, also in between chemistry and physics, but there is also a lot of uh, applications in biology. Uh, in order to compare this quantum mechanics approach and molecular mechanics approach, uh, here we have uh, two acids. If we describe these acids by means of quantum mechanics, we consider uh, nuclei and clouds of electrons. In molecular mechanics, we define bondings between uh, atoms and for these bonds, uh, we can calculate contribution to the total energy due to this bonding term. Uh, between uh, three atoms, uh, we define angles, which also contribute to this uh, total energy. And between four atoms, uh, we define torsional angle, uh, which also contributes to this total energy. We can also uh, set uh, partial charges at particular atoms which contributes to interaction between atoms between molecules. This is uh, this electrostatic term and also uh, van der Waals interaction between different parts uh, of atoms. So total energy is a sum of this covalent and non-covalent part. This non-covalent part is this bond, angle, torsional. Uh, it might be also possible to add some also different terms. And this non-covalent one is this electrostatic plus van der Waals. Uh, in case of different uh, systems, we can also include uh, other effects in this case. For example, for ionic solid, we can uh, include polarization effect. Uh, so, for particular systems, we need to define the sets of parameters. And this is called force fields. For example, for this uh, quite complicated organic molecule, we have different types of uh, oxygen atoms. We have uh, oxygen with, which is connected to two carbons. We have oxygen which is connected to carbon and hydrogen and also oxygen which is connected with double bond to carbon. So for each of these oxygen atom, we will have uh, different force field parameters. So the, uh, these force fields are tabulated and we can take them and use for particular systems. So for example, the force fields which are optimized for organic molecules containing certain uh, atoms, the force field parameters for hydrocarbons, uh, for water molecules, for clay, for clay minerals, and there are also force field parameters uh, for all atoms. Uh, force field parameters can be obtained from uh, experimental data, like for example for crystal structures or from uh, infrared spectra. We can also obtain force field parameters uh, by fitting of uh, quantum chemical data. Uh, in order to connect the description obtained from uh, molecular mechanics with uh, what we observe in nature, we need to perform calculations of certain averages. For example, this average will be temperature, pressure, uh, energy, or for example, some, some kind of uh, average distance between 
atoms. So uh, we perform this uh, calculations of this average for certain sets of different states. And we can have uh, two approaches uh, in order to obtain these uh, sets of states. Uh, in one approach we can uh, calculate evolution of this first structure in time by means of the equations of motion. In the second approach these uh, structures are uh, independent and not connected causally. The first approach is called molecular dynamics. Uh, in this approach we solve uh, numerical equations, uh, numerically solve uh, Newtonian equations of motion and see evolution of the system in time. In the second approach uh, we generate some initial state then the next configuration is obtained by some kind of perturbation of this first state and then uh, for this new state we check acceptance condition uh, for example we can uh, check in if this new structure uh, has higher or lower energy comparing to this uh, initial structure so for example, if this uh, new structure has larger energy, uh, we do not accept this new configuration. Uh, if the uh, energy decreases, we have the new state and again we can uh, perform uh, perturbation of this new state and uh, in this way uh, obtain uh, a set of structure for which we will can calculate these averages. We also perform a lot of calculations in molecular mechanics using these uh, periodic boundary conditions. Uh, this concept is similar to what is used in uh, crystallochemistry, uh, the concept of uh, unit cell. Uh, in this approach we have walls, uh, six walls for uh, particular system and uh, one wall will inter interact with its parallel wall. So when atom goes out from one wall, it will enter the same system from the, its parallel wall, corresponding one. We also have uh, ter thermodynamical ensembles. We can set certain parameters to be constant during the, the simulations. We can set a uh, constant number of particles, we can set constant volume, uh, constant energy, constant pressure, we can also set constant chemical potential. So we will have uh, variab variable number of uh, particles and we will have some, some kind of reservoir between which and our studied system particular mo molecules will be exchanged. Application of applications of this non-reactive uh, molecular approach. Generally, uh, because of the simplicity of this, descrip this description, we will have uh, longer time and uh, longer length scale available uh, than it was possible uh, in uh, quantum mechanics. However, uh, because of this simplicity, uh, this approach is not applicable to studies of uh, magnetism, uh, UV spectra. Generally, uh, all problems that uh, requires uh, description of electronic properties. So uh, we are also not able to study chemical reactions. Uh, in one of the application of uh, molecular mechanics, we were interested in studies of interaction of water with clay minerals. And we were able to see that depending on the distance, orientation of water molecules changed. In this example, uh, we were interested in studies of uh, variation of the structure of 
uh, particular system uh, with clay mineral and uh, particular organic molecule depending on the number of water molecules in the system. And we are able to obtain substantial changes in the structure depending on the humidity. Uh, in another example, uh, we studied uh, also uh, sorption of particular organic molecule and water. Uh, then um, we calculate uh, average uh, distribution of particular molecules uh, perpendicularly uh, to the uh, clay layer and based on that uh, we were able to calculate uh, corresponding X-ray diffraction data. Uh, for this particular structure we uh, were able to uh, predict uh, content uh, corresponding to the uh, thermodynamic equilibrium. Uh, we were also interested uh, in studies of evolution of particular systems in time. Uh, in this case, uh, we wanted to uh, answer the question why argon is, is kept uh, by silica while potassium is removed uh, to surrounding uh, water and based on molecular simulations it was possible to give answer to this question. Uh, in more biological uh, approaches uh, there are studies of interactions of proteins uh, with certain membranes for example and there is also a very important concept of coarse graining uh, with which uh, as uh, for example in this case we can uh, perform calculations for membranes and uh, using this approach we can study much larger systems than it's uh, possible uh, in this classical atomistic approach. And here are some uh, applications uh, of this coarse grinding approach and here. And finally uh, this reactive molecular dynamics. Uh, the idea is based on uh, bond order calcul calculations and this approach is approximate, approximately one million times faster than quantum mechanics and it's only uh, a little uh, bit slower than this non-reactive approach. As I told, uh, the approach is based on the bond order concept. And here we have uh, three hydrocarbons uh, with different uh, bond, bond orders and marked uh, particular distance. And on the uh, right side we can see dependence of bond order on the interatomic distance. So uh, we can see that for for example for distance of 1.5 we have bond order of 1 while for uh, around 1.2 we will uh, have bond order close to 3. Based on this uh, bond order uh, we calculate bond angle torsional uh, energies and here in this uh, slide we can see uh, bond energy corresponding to uh, particular bond order. In case of torsional energy we will have contribution uh, and changing this uh, angle term depending on actual bond order. And here we, here we have comparison of uh, calculations performed for this reactive approach with uh, density functional theory and we can see uh, very good correspondence between uh, these two approaches. Uh, reactive uh, molecular dynamics approach applications. Uh, in these studies, uh, we were interested in uh, interactions of uh, argon-40, uh, which has particular speed of 12 kilometers per second, with uh, clay minerals. Uh, 
Uh, based on that, uh, we want to, to predict possibility uh, of keeping argon uh, 40 in the structure after uh, its uh, radioactive reaction uh, from uh, for potassium 40. Based on that, uh, we uh, calculated a uh, runaway of this argon from the structure depending on the actual size uh, of clay minerals. Uh, in another application, uh, Chenovet et al. in 2008 uh, calculated oxygen consumption during hydrocarbon oxidation. Uh, and we can see on the left side we have uh, different uh, hydrocarbons uh, mixed with oxygen and on the right side uh, we can see that there's uh, CO2, uh, water and also some complex uh, organic molecules. In more biological approach uh, we have the example uh, of uh, RNA polymerase 2 and its evolution in time uh, with, and changing of uh, different distances. For example, here we, can, we have uh, marked particular distances and uh, evolution of dis these distances uh, in time. So, summarizing. In this quantum mechanical approach, we can study reactions, we can uh, study properties that depends on uh, electronic state. Uh, these are generally quite expensive methods and are applicable for relatively uh, small systems. And generally most uh, of the calculations are performed uh, rather in a static regime. In molecular mechanics approach, uh, we can calculate uh, relatively much larger systems, uh, but generally we have this rigid connectivity, so we cannot uh, study reactions, and generally most of the calculations uh, are performed in a dynamic way. In this reactive uh, approach, uh, we can st study uh, both reactions, and uh, calculations can be performed for relatively uh, larger systems. Uh, however, there is st still need some optimization for certain systems. Thank you very much.